Greg Sheridan of the Australian newspaper. Greg, one frightening thing about this attack is that the Russian media was going soft, obviously, on instructions, uh, barely mentioning that this idea that they were, they were um, from the Islamic State or something, going harder on the Ukraine angle with uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, the president, giving national address, suggesting they were fleeing to Ukraine, they were caught and they were implicated somehow. What do you make of all this? Well, Andrew, it's a fascinating and tragic and uh, bloody business. Uh, Putin has a long history of using... Islamist attacks to justify his own strategic moves. I mean, that justified his assault on Chechnya. The uh, Moscow apartment building is being blown up. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I believe this was an Islamic State attack. They've claimed credit for it. Gary Kasparov, the great Russian dissident, thinks that maybe Putin arranged this himself. Um, and uh, I don't think that's true, but it's a fascinating argument. However, the fact that he, he won't say it's an Islamic State attack and is trying to blame it on Ukraine, as if Ukraine would employ four Muslim terrorists to kill uh, Russian civilians in a Moscow theatre, it's the most implausible thing you could imagine. But Putin will, with his total information dominance within Russia, will convince a lot of his people that somehow or other Ukraine had a hand in this and that will... Um, he's now declared that Russia is at war with Ukraine. And um, I think Western irresolution and weakness is giving him hope that he can prevail in Ukraine. Two things about that. But first of all, um, is Putin actually in the clear here uh, in terms of being complicit in that the Americans warned a week or two ago uh, people stay away from crowded venues like exactly this. There's, we fear a terrorist attack. It happened. Putin said, oh, they're just trying to panic us. Uh, no, 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 uh, we don't, uh, we don't, that's misinformation. What do you make of that? Well, Putin... And, of course, the, tr the police did not arrive at the venue for an hour. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Andrew. Putin um, was a man formed, grown up and, and uh, created in the KGB. He was a colonel in the KGB. Disinformation, terror, the whole lot. And I think the case is very strong that he has previously staged fake terrorist attacks in order to justify strategic moves. On the balance of the evidence we have so far, but let me hasten to say I don't know, but on the basis of the evidence we have so far, I think it is an Islamic State attack, which he is now ruthlessly exploiting. Now, it's true... No, I just no, mean that he, he was warned it was coming, he did nothing to prevent it, and the police didn't come for an hour. Yeah, the only, the only thing I'd add, I'm, I'm, I'm not ruling that line of thinking out at all, not at all. The only thing I'd add, though, is the Russian ability to have a massive cock-up is, is fantastic, as we saw with the initial invasion of Ukraine. So, you know, the policemen were drunk, no-one was on duty, nobody answered the phone, it's not inconceivable. And then, but then Putin, of course, whether by design or by incompetence, has this mess and he will try to exploit it. I just worry that he could exploit it to do something even worse to Ukraine now, like uh, tell the... Oh, well, you know, nuclear weapons, God knows. Who knows what, what it'll do. Um, one thing this did bring out for me is also a reminder again that this is the sort of thing that Israel is fighting against themselves. Islamist terrorism... We've also seen France undergo the Bataclan theatre attack, Manchester undergo a Manchester arena attack, the same sort of thing. And perhaps we, uh, in the West, people in the West should recall that the is Islamist terrorism is not something Israel can appease any more than any Western country can. The enemy is the same. Well, that's absolutely right, Andrew. The, the Islamic State is trying very hard to reconstitute itself in a number of territories, in particular Afghanistan, which is now a very permissive environment for terrorists. It has come in waves. It's come and gone in waves. It tends hideously to say this, but it's true, to get great prestige from these big mass terrorist attacks. I went and had lunch with a couple of Israelis today and they said the, the Hamas attacks in, uh, on October 7... They didn't sound like Palestinian attacks. They sounded like Islamic State attacks. Now, they, they, they believe they were Palestinians, but who have imbibed the culture of Islamic State. And Islamic State wants to spread this ideology of which an extreme sadistic murderous quality 
is a central part. The violence is part of the ideology. It's not an add-on to, you know, the religion of peace or something. It's part of the ideology. And they will... Now, Russia itself has a lot of trouble with its Muslim minority. It's a big power in Syria. Islamic State is unhappy with what it's doing in Syria. Uh, um, it seems that Russia vetoed a second Syrian front against Israel because it didn't want its own military bases put under threat and it didn't think the Syrian army could fight. Mm -hmm. So there's a big agenda here and I think the terrorists are trying to make a count comeback because like China and Iran and Russia, they've seen a certain weakness in the West. Coming back to the same theme again and again. Absolutely. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much indeed for your Thanks, time. Thanks,